Can give I us the anything? word. And you're live. And we are live. Let's see if that's true. Let's see if we are live. If you guys can see us and hear us, let's check this out. Remember to talk loud, everybody, because they can't hear you on the mic. Only the recording will keep you on the mic. Virtual high five, guys. <laughs> Virtual high five. Hey, it's like that Lego Batman part where he goes, should we let them fly over us? Well, as long as they're best friends. Well, they're best friends. <laughs> as long as they're best friends. All right, so where's our live footage? Come on, kill the, go ahead and kill the other event and let's make sure this one's live. I am not seeing it right now, so let's see what we get. Do -do -do. Are you seeing it late, live on your side, Peyton? Uh, no, I just. We don't know if anyone is on right now, if I'm talking to anyone at this very moment, but yeah, we the, are. Yeah, the live feature's weird because it sometimes wouldn't post until like later, much later. Well, obviously, we need to have it live so we can follow us. So let's see what's yeah. going on. If you're there right now, thanks for hanging out with us. We're going to make sure. watching. Oh, five hey. of you watching. Hey, guys. So as soon as this is showing live and we're good to go, we are recording a podcast today. Episode 35, talking about our Monument Valley trip and the Thousand Mile trip, which is all the same weekend. So it is nuts. Yeah. <sighs> okay, let me see if I can find it on here. Video, da 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 da. Kill that event so that I don't see that as the featured anymore. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum. Um, Actually, Peyton, I'm going to kill the feature. You go ahead and... I'll, like, get rid of it. Uh, I'm killing it myself right now. Oh, okay. All right. So now we should see our live video feed up here, too. Go ahead and explain to the five people watching right now if there's any more of what we're doing today and what the podcast will be like following it live while I go ahead and work on this. Uh, so today we're going to be podcasting on our, um, oh, a couple weekends ago we did a quick Southern Utah round trip, um, about a thousand, twelve hundred miles or so, they put on the car and uh, it was it was pretty awesome, we, we visited Monument Valley, we visited um, uh, Natural Bridges National Monument, is that right? It's not a national park, it's a national monument. National right? monument, yep. So the park pass still works for the national monument, which is cool, so. Um, <clears throat> We did Goblin Valley. First day was Goblin Valley, wasn't it? Goblin Valley at sunset. Yeah, okay, you don't Valley. have to recount all the trip though, because we're about to do that live. Okay. So just like what to expect with us talking and it being unedited and stuff like that. So they're just gonna watch us give our podcast. <laughs> we're not gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna do the finished podcast. We'll be an edited, more refined version of this. But just for you guys now, live, um, we thought it'd be cool just to show you guys how we got our setup. So a little usually, behind the scenes. Yeah, actually. yeah. So usually I'm over here and Aaron's over there, so we can look at each other and talk to each other. But when we, when we do a live feed, uh, we like to look at you guys, or you guys look at us. We <laughs> so. look at a phone that has a camera. We're looking at a phone. And we pretend robot. that your faces yeah. are right there. So uh, we've got our audio recording on a little Tascam unit. Just an the phone. Peyton, the intern. Yeah, <clears throat> I just made it the featured thing. So all right. So when I refresh, I should see our live feed. Any questions coming in from you guys who are watching, we will take live, and it won't. It may or may not be in the podcast. We might keep it in, or we might just answer your question and go for it and see how it's working. So ask away. Tate will let us know about him. He'll ask the questions for you, and then we will answer them and handle them live. Pretty much. So it so sure you. takes a while for it to update, doesn't it? Because on Peyton's end, he sees that it's featured. I am not seeing that it's featured. Some of you out there might be looking for it as well and not seeing that it's featured, so... Oh, it's not featured. That was just... I attempted to make it featured. Oh, uh, our, our intern's lying now. He attempted something and he failed, so Sheesh. everyone take note. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why YouTube acts like this. I know. Bizarre. We're going to have to get something that Drew has, which is an audio <laughs> encoder that allows us to actually have... What's happening here be sent through a box and then we can control it better. I think I did it right now. You think you did it right? Because <laughs> it's five minutes into this live feed and we haven't started yet. Oh, hey, here, here we, we are. Go. Hey, I did something useful. Woohoo! Go. Good job, intern. Good job, everybody. Team, team hug. Later. Yeah. It's in the loop now between, uh, yeah. It's probably like a good 30 second delay like last time. <laughs> but now we can see what we got here. Now I can see my view. 
I could go like this, get comfortable, and I know people are there. So Peyton, any questions that came up yet that we should answer before we get going? Uh, George Rosma asks, where is my Nikon D850? D850, I am tired of waiting. <laughs> <laughs> hey George, you know what? There's a lot of problems right now with weather, shipping, the Trump presidency, so you know, I just <laughs> I don't think the package has made it there yet, but it's on its way. You don't miss someone? <laughs> no. No. We'll never give one of those away. Maybe someday. Um another note is that I have a cough, and so I'll be sucking down these cough drops throughout the episode. So if you see that I'm eating, it's not because I'm just so chubby I must eat. It's because I have a cough. So you're just thinking chubby bunny. Okay? <laughs> so George wants a D850. <laughs> Man, I want a D850, but it's not released yet. I mean... Oh, so that's the newest one, huh? Yeah, it'll be the next one that comes out with luck. That's what they call it. I'm not sure if the rumors are accurate and it will be called the D850 or if it's been announced in today. We've done this before. We had a live podcast, and then people asked about something that was released that day or the news was released, and we hadn't even read it yet. So we didn't know what we were talking about. And we couldn't answer any questions about it. We had Roy Spare there talking about the AS9, right? A9. The A9 that it came out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For Sony. And it just came out like the, that day. <clears throat> All right. So now that we're live, any questions? A D850, you're coming to George soon. Uh, I'm sure they'll announce it because you know how Nikon is right now. They're really on top of their game. Sarcasm. Ten people watching with two likes. Good job. Awesome. Okay, let's get started. So we'll go ahead and begin the podcast. We'll have two breaks during the podcast. We'll stay live during the break. But this is just for the podcast sake, and Brennan and I will run it from here. So you go ahead and get the notes going there, and I'll start off the set. Oh, they're already up. Okay. Booyah. All right. So we play our music typically. You have the music playing. You hear Brennan and I go back and forth about being fortunate to have Utah area around and all these beautiful national parks. And then we talk about how we're lucky to do this and we're going to try and do it every month, two or three time big trips. And then it comes in to us. It's episode 35. Thanks for joining us again, everybody. We're at episode 35. Wow. I mean, we had some bonus episodes, so that puts us at 40 something now. Yeah. But I'm excited to have 35 be our number because one of my favorite podcasts in the world, Tripod, well, it was only in the 40s, and so we're going to catch up to Tripod soon. All right. And I'm excited to catch up to Tripod because I admire, adore, and revere Nick Page and Jim Harmer's work on Tripod. So yeah, hope we catch guys. you guys. You better, if you want to keep up with us, you better start releasing an episode every week. Sorry, which everyone wins if you do that. So welcome to episode 35. Today we're going to talk about what, Brendan? The Monument Valley area, um, Southern Utah, some of the uh, national parks and national monuments around there and about the thousand miles plus that we did to shoot our Patreon video. As crazy as that sounds, that wasn't the first time that we went a thousand miles in a weekend. No. But the it's other not. time was your wife's fault, which was a great fault, because it yeah. gave us a chance to go to Arches when we weren't planning on going to the and Arches. That was, when, that was kind of when we first started out, too. Yeah. We went out to an area, and we did this huge, giant triangle <laughs> around, the, around the state, because my wife took the kids down to Arches and wanted us to meet her there. She's so. like, hey, can you meet us here tomorrow? I was like, uh, we're in Goshen area. Or not Goshen area. We were in no. Delta area. Yeah, yeah. Over there by Notch Peak. So we drove three miles from there to get to Arches, and it was a three-mile drive home for me that night. Three hour. Oh, yeah, three miles. Yeah, <laughs> three hour three drive. Miles. <laughs> three hour tour each way. <laughs> so, yeah, so we, uh, we, we shot our Patreon video originally here in the studio. Just kind of sitting what you like guys, this. Yeah, kind of what you guys are seeing now. And uh, we talked about the stuff that we wanted to do and all our goals and stuff. And then we looked at the video and we're just like, eh, you know. <laughs> so um, we decided to <clears throat> take it on the road and do the areas that, we, that we've already kind of been to. Some areas. Actually, we've been to all the areas. Yeah, um, I've been to every one of them except I don't think you'd ever seen Natural Bridges. I had not. Been, yeah, I hadn't been to Natural Bridges yet, but you had the weekend before, and so that kind of spread the idea. Hey, let's just go down and do a quick round trip. Uh, Aaron planned it all out. It was crazy fun and, to uh, see all the places we could hit in a very short and diamond. Hit, yeah, we hit all those places within like a twenty-four hour period. Yeah, it was nuts. The sunset at Goblin Valley, and then we had sunset at Arches the next day, and by that point we'd already hit. Goblin Valley, Natural Bridges National Monument. We went past Goosenecks, never got out. 
Went to yeah. Ma- Monument Valley. Oh, I already said that. No, Monument Valley. I kind of blended it in with National National Monument. Yeah. Huh? Monument Valley. We went to Valley of or House on Fire Ruins, but we never hiked out in there. Yeah. And then up to Arches and that area down Rock. And because we missed House on Fire, wasn't um, going to work out for us, and we missed Goosenecks as well. Well, um, about a week later, at the end of that week, actually, we went to Salt Flats. Oh, and right. Finished the video there. Was it a few days later we went out to the salt flats of the sunset? It seemed like a less, little less than a week. Yeah. A little less than a week later. So. It was beautiful out there because it was a full moon night. And we had a chance yeah. to see the full moon rising over the flat of the salt flats. And in Utah, typically where we live in the valleys of all the high mountain peaks, we don't see moon, sun, rises, or sets on the horizon. We can't see them until they're up for an hour. Nope. And then they're much smaller. Hey, speaking of intern awesome Peyton, dramatic. anything come in that has a question on? on uh, the George Rosma again, can we see any pictures from this adventure? Yes. The pictures from this adventure, okay, I guess I take the back. You say video of this adventure. Well, we have some pictures and we Nothing's got posted mostly though, video. right? You might have some Instagram posts. Um, I have a couple of Instagram posts and I've got... Uh, Mike Spivy, really quick, just says, Brendan's volume is lower, almost like his mic is not not working. So it's not his mic, it's the phone. Yeah, we're well, yeah, so we're live feed, tighter. <clears throat> the live feed is actually coming to the phone and my voice just doesn't project as well as his voice. I'm yelling. So my <laughs> microphone feed is actually turned up almost twice as much as his because my voice just doesn't project as much. So you want me, to, want me to carry it for a sec while you move that guy closer to we us? Can move it a little bit closer. I mean we've got some room here. Got lots of room to I'm work. Tighten with. it up a little bit. Cool. And I'll use this pillow as fictional, Brendan. This is where Brendan's head needs to be in the frame. You can go around that. So for those of you watching behind the scenes, this won't be in the podcast right now. This is what I'll edit out. But what we have is a task cam. Hey, Brendan, show the, show the room a little bit. Just do like a quick 360. Yeah, and show Peyton over there at the computer. Okay, so there's our little recording unit. Do a fast pan of my messy side. <laughs> so the task cam right there, show them the task cam. That's what we're recording the podcast with. And that task cam is running the whole time. We edit all the video, all the audio off of that. We have three, we have four inputs that we can put on that. And what is it like two outputs really? And we split the audio with one splitter. Yeah. Maybe even one audio output, huh? So, so we're going around the task cam now, coming in tighter. Here's where your head was. You got this in frame? Yeah. All right. Okay, so this way, this should help Brendan be heard That'll be a little better. bit better. Yeah. That way the podcast isn't entirely Aaron King talking, which is actually how it always goes, huh? I talk way too much in life and in podcasts. So. It, it's really true. <laughs> hey, Peyton. Watch <laughs> I found my calling in life talking to people. <laughs> it's something he enjoys. So back to the live podcast. We're going to be talking about the rest of the trip and going into the rest of the content. Is there anything else? Well, I just had an idea because the microphone is actually pointing away from us at this point. Sounds and better, so by the way. It does sound better? Oh, that's good because it's closer. But I, I might actually 3D print a little something to scoop around so we can actually speak into mm. it and might capture our voices better. So. Brendan has a 3D printer I and the ability to that. do so with 3D modeling, and yeah. so he creates awesome stuff. Mm-hmm. Our control, the controller for our our DJI Phantom and our DJI Phantom, DJI Inspire drone has a connector for a shield that blocks the sunlight, and that connector is custom made from Brendan. Yeah, it's good work. All right, awesome. So go ahead and finish up your where we went, and then we'll go into the fo- into the announcements and the photo like adventure listeners. So, yeah, so we did a quick we did a quick. Um, you know, like a, almost like a quick 360 tour of Southern Utah, and then um, and then we rounded off our video with Salt Flats at the end. <clears throat> so um, we hit Goblin Valley, we hit Monument Valley, Natural Bridges National Monument, Balance Rock in the Arches National Park, and then um, I'm not going to go into specific history for each one of these areas because in our past podcast we actually did do some of the history from those areas. So I, if you guys are interested in those, you can go to the past to the pa- back in the past and see some podcasts and listen to them from those areas that we already covered. So, um, so that's a, you know, a little promotion for go back and listen to our other podcasts. If you haven't already, um, you've heard some of the history on some of those, if you already have heard those podcasts. So, um, Aaron's going to talk about listener, listener, um, photog adventure. 
which is uh, this week coming from Stanley Harper. Actually, we're going to change that because Stanley Harper has a very awesome long story okay. that I neglected to cut out my favorite parts of it yet and put okay. it on the notes. Okay. So for sake of time, I'm going to jump to Mike Lawton this week, and we'll do Stanley Harper next. Sorry, okay. Stan. Our condolences to your family situation, man. Good luck with everything. So the... Um, this, because this is not live, we can just kind of wing it from here. I haven't given any of the announcements yet, and I want to give them, and then I'll go to the Flow Talk Adventure listener. Okay. So that's good. Cool. So some of you guys have already noticed our Patreon account. We have a Patreon page now that you can go and donate and help us keep this, this project funded over at patreon.com forward slash Flow Talk Adventures. And I wanted to talk about a survey that we have going, and we want you guys to come in and join in on it. If you go to the Facebook listener group, the survey has a link there. You just have to do a search for our survey. But I will put out on these podcast notes that you're hearing from right now, you'll have a link to the survey. And those of you live will get a link to the survey to you really quickly. I'll help the intern get that out to you while we're live. Hey. So Peyton, if you see at the top of our Google Docs, the very main page, you'll see the survey. You can go ahead and share a public link to that. One if you go to the Google shortener too, the Google URL so shortener, you'll see one there. Drive, then shared with me, Photog Adventures, and then... You see Photog Adventure listener, listener um, survey? Do I go to Photog Podcasts? You won't go in the folder, actually. It's with the shared with me, it's main screen. Uh, actually, I don't see it in there. Go to my drive. It's under my drive. Newsletter form, scattered location. Uh, Out of the shared with me folder, go to my drive. So let's go back to our podcast. So... What we have is Mike Lawton. Let's tell Mike Lawton's story. So every week we like to feature a Photog Adventure listener story because Brendan and I are all about encouraging others to go out and do camera work, photography work on their own. And so we hope that you guys will take the time in your life to go out and do these things and be inspired to go out. And this story, I think this one does a little bit less about inspiring. Chandler just screamed hi, by the way. Chandler screamed hi? Hey, Chandler. Hey, man. I'm glad you're watching. So... We've got <laughs> this story. It's going to inspire you to go out and also inspire you to not go out where he lives. Let's just say it that oh. way. So okay. Mike Lawton, he says, after a couple hours of driving down to Mayaka River or Mayaka, Mayaka, Mayaka River State Park, I set up my tent and went out to scout locations. And then, <laughs> as he was scouting at locations near this little stream, he thought, okay, I can put my camera here, go here. And before he knew it, he accidentally almost stepped on a 14-foot alligator. Whoa. And he goes, okay, I can't oh get reflection shots in this water. I'm going to get out of here. And he got out of there as fast as he could. It wasn't nearly a full moon, but, you know, it was kind of blocking the Milky Way in a shot. So here's his picture here, Brendan. Okay. So we'll share this picture with you guys on the show notes. This is his Milky Way shot, but it's a good example of seeing how much the moon can wash out your Milky Way, even in a dark sky location like Mayaka State Park. So where was the moon located? Was it on the other side? You don't see it, and it's setting before it hadn't set yet, and he went for the picture early, and I don't wow. even think that it would have set before astronomical dawn. I'm thinking this situation, the okay, moon yeah. is still going to be So the up. moon is lighting the trees. Yeah, you can see all the light okay. on the terrain. So it almost looks like daylight. Really? So it looks like he took two exposures, but that the moon is so bright when you're doing a 20-second exposure that it literally looks like daylight. So, <laughs> yeah, that's that's incredible. So it looks great with the foreground, it's nice and clean, but then you've yeah. also got a Milky Way that is so washed out by the light pollution in the distance yeah, and then yeah. the light pollution of the moon. It looks like a blue sky instead of a dark purple right, black sky right, that you right. really want. It's still a cool image though. Very. He got a good resolution on the Milky Way after all, despite all of that. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't et by an alligator. <laughs> right. He shares in the cha in the conversation other pictures of the area that he was at. You can see this really cool bridge going oh, across the river, yeah. and you can see how it's shallow, where alligators would hang out. And yeah, that's going to be bad news for him. So is he in Florida? He is in Florida. Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, what does he say here about where he's at? Mike Lawton. <laughs> he's got more pictures, got of, pictures alligators. of alligators <laughs> on his page. It doesn't say the exact area of Florida, but I'm pretty sure he's either in Florida or in one of the states surrounding the northern wow. part of Florida. So great job on your picture, Mike. We know that you have plenty more stories to come and share. That's so cool. thanks for sharing your story. Reminder to those of you who want to share your story with us on the Photog Adventure and you want us to feature it, put on there on the Facebook listener group, hashtag listener Photog Adventures, and I know that you want me to share it. Make sure you give me your settings and everything. Oh, and that reminds me that he did give me the settings down here in a comment reply. Yeah, I was going to say, what, what were you using for that? So, so 
This is where I edit in the podcast to keep things faster paced, but when you watch things live, behind the scenes, you gotta go and roll with it. So, I'm slightly stupid, and I found the Photog Adventures listener survey. Yeah. Okay, and that so made I you just... stupid because you found it, or it took so long to find I'm it? I'm stupid because it was the second thing on the page. <laughs> yeah, I was You just kept looking that. underneath it, like, oh, what is it? <laughs> yeah, I thought it'd be a little bit lower. Not that Where bad. did that iPad go? I just <laughs> I keep getting things in my way. I can't find it. <laughs> All right, where did he put his information? Oh, a few more replies right here, I bet. And then do I just put it in the live chat or what? Will, do you see a copy public link at the top right? One of the options for cup, pop, copying a link for it? One second. On the actual server, you'll see a way to share it and then just copy that link and um, then post it in the comments on our YouTube channel and then we'll share it in the notes afterwards. Just press send? No, like, no. Um, I'll let Peyton figure that out as he goes through there. Try send if it doesn't work on anything else. So here's his settings. Mike Lofton had six shots. They're layered together. Oh, so okay. he helped bring out a lot of the detail of the nice. Milky Way probably okay. because Smart. he had stacked okay. shots. So even though he's fighting light pollution of the moon and light pollution of the city's areas in the distance, he got through that because of it. Yeah. He used a Rokinon 14 millimeter at oh. 2.8. He was at ISO 3200 and he exposed it for 17 seconds long. And do we know what kind of camera body he's using? Canon 5D Mark III. Okay. So, awesome cool. job, Mike. Thanks for sharing that. And I'm excited to share Stanley Harper's image next week because it's an awesome hey, storm yeah, it's image. Awesome. It's yeah. fantastic. All right, so carry on. Let's have you start first. Okay, so um, we're just going to talk about like <laughs> stuff that happened along the way. Um, you have to do it without me for a sec. In Dublin Valley, um, yeah. in Dublin Valley, we tried to retrace our steps. And <laughs> gosh dang it. Okay. I'm going to read that. Is that distracting? <laughs> yes. <laughs> in Dublin Valley, we tried to retrace our steps from when we went there a year ago. So did you find it? And that was one of the first times we'd gone out, specifically to southern Utah, specifically okay, to a location. And we didn't get there until it was after and sunset the or the snowball. URL the sun was the setting, in the but we wanted to get some sunset shots. But when we first got there, the sun was a little too high, and it was just roasting hot. I mean, it was just like, it felt like it was 100 degrees. And there was zero oh, plant life out there. It was just so these big yeah, hoodoos that so are just good. mud and oh, solid pieces right of clay. So it was just an oven, like a so clay oven man, down the there chat. being baked by the sun all day long. So we're like, we're not going to go out there and look at, at anything until the sun gets a little lower and we're not going to get fried. So we waited for like an hour, I think, um, on the little pavilion at the top. And then we hiked down after that. And we found our locations. We got some great shots. We were super excited. Those um, those have been published for over a year now. So you guys have probably seen our Goblin Valley pictures. Um, if you haven't already, they're posted. What are they anyways? Are there, there's some on 500px. Um, you could show Aaron the Facebook actually list had forward. a canvas. A friend of his printed a canvas <coughs> of his shot. And this was um, like seven or eight exposures. Yeah, with for the me, light painting. With me light painting from the from this from this side over here. So, um, mine I found a little what I called the grotto in our one of our first videos, and I showed um, Gosh, those it. cool structures and stuff <clears throat> with the Milky Way shooting over it. So we were oh, super no. excited about the way those turned out. Anyways, when we went back, we tried to um, find those places in the daylight, and it was almost impossible. It took us like a good long time. It was before crazy. we like finally found like the structures that looked similar and it was all during the daytime so it totally looked different i mean when we, so left, nuts. when we left to go back to find the, we went to go back to get our stuff to get the strings hanging out again oh we're draining it my hat so while we were working on trying to get the survey out justin park asked a question how do you focus on the stars when you don't have an infinity ring <laughs> oh, you still have it hanging out um <laughs> It's How do you fo get focus there. on the star or focus on finding the stars? How do you focus on, on the, the Clark stars? Kent, then. Yep, on the star. Um, Peyton, can you come get a device that's up top there? It's in a, it's on one of those shelves that should be in a white plastic tube. What I do is I usually find the brightest thing in the, in the sky and I and I ten x zoom in. You know, like using live view, I ten x zoom into it and then I just really try to auto or manually Where focus it? on it as best I can. And then sometimes you can stop your lens down White a little package. bit to get the extra sharpness that you're looking for. That's, so if you do stop your lens down, one. it's best to either turn your ISO up a little bit higher or to do a longer exposure. So 
All right, so don't cut into your edit of the podcast. Right there in the gray bag, try in the top pocket. Oh, don't pull everything out. Just top pocket. You don't have to pull it out. It's right there already. See if it's in there. Do you feel like a tube in there? Because what Brendan said is a perfect way of getting your focus, and there's another way of seeing your 10x zoom even Power better. <laughs> so you don't see like a white tube that's about two inches, three inches tall that's standing on one of those shelves. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, here Peyton's found it. This? Yep. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, so for those of you on the podcast, you've heard about this on the Astro Photog Talk podcast, and those of you who've already heard me talk about them before, but this is my container that holds my loop. And it's a 10 times magnifying loop. So on top of 10 times on your LCD screen, you have this loop. And who was it that asked this question? Justin Park. Justin. Hey, Justin. So here's the loop that I use. It's five bucks. I think it's actually less than five bucks on Amazon. Oh, wow. So nice. this Carson Lumi loop, 10 times magnifier, because <coughs> it has a focusing plastic, the shot glass thing that's right here. It keeps the distance, so it helps you have your focus when you're looking at it. And so when you're looking through this on your LCD screen, you're going to see that brightest object in the sky that you look at, most likely a planet, something that's really bright. You're going to have that be a giant ball on the back of your monitor, back of the LCD screen. And when you twist your focus on the front, you'll notice when you kind of get it distorted or color aberrated a little yeah, bit. So you just going to go back and forth, rock it back and forth until you get it just right. And then when you like it, and it's the tightest it can be, and you can literally see the pixels in your LCD screen with this, and you're like, okay, it was five wide, not six. Okay, go back down to five wide. I like that. Boom, you call it focus right there. You tape it off with gaffer's tape, and then you shoot away the rest of the night. Yeah. Just know that as temperatures change, your, your infinity point will change. Your infinity point on your lens will change with color, with a temperature changes and so if you do it while you're at home before the night starts and you get it focused and you go out at night and it drops 20 30 degrees because it will you're going to have to redo your focus so it's better to do your focus right there on location as you're ready to go and start shooting because it'll it'll remain at that infinity mark at the right spot nice and tight and focused for a good couple hours few hours probably the whole night really unless yeah. you get an extreme change of weather throughout the night yeah all right cool any other questions we can address, Peyton, right now? Um, Thank you guys for watching the live feed of Kirk this because D -Keys this is a fun way of doing it. What's that, uh, Kirk? Kirk, Kirk D -Keys, yeah. Keys Photography. I never thought I'd use my 4x5 camera focusing loop on a digital camera, but <laughs> I tried it on Saturday night. I ended up using Oh, a Peyton, turn your mic on and reread that question. Oh. I want to have that in the podcast. Okay. So I never thought I'd use my five, four times five camera focusing loop on, on a digital camera, but I tried it on Saturday night. I ended up just focus, just focus peeking on my Sony as it seemed as good as a loop. Okay, so you're saying, oh. Kirk, that you tried it on there that night, you never thought you would, but then focus peeking on your Sony was good enough <laughs> to tell you that you were in focus as much as using a loop would? Is that what you're saying, Kirk? Okay, so the focus peaking readout on his LCD was actually showing him when he was in focus. He um, said yes. Yep, okay. okay. For Canon users, you can use Magic Lantern for that. Or you can use this, you know, <laughs> piece of hardware as well. Um, Thanks, Kurt. I guess the nice thing about focus uh, peaking Sony. is that if you're looking at a bright object, it actually will show up. So in Magic Lantern, it shows up as a green as a green pixel. Is that how it shows the focus peaking? Is yeah, a so green so, color? So yeah, so if, this, so if this plane, for instance, is in focus, it'll show the green pixels denser along that, and then it kind of spreads out as it's less focus. So if I had the letter H, and I was out of focus on the H, none of the H would be green, but if right, H but the, was in focus, I'd have a green H in the green middle? Solid green H, right. right. Okay. It right. Kind of like the, it's like the green pixels collect on the most in focus thing. So. Oh, awesome. Cool. Anything else we can address while we're at this part? I can't remember where we're at over here. Oh, oh you're so, telling the Golden yeah, Valley story. Yeah. So the next funny thing that happened was uh, the trail... Actually, go back to the Golden Valley story. I really want to talk about that. Because okay, Because okay. when we left that night from our tripod and headed back to the car... The first night ever there. The dark night. Yeah. Yep, the dark night. And we're thinking, okay, we are adults. We know how to handle this. I'm going to feel that I'm going this direction. <laughs> and I'm going to go that direction. And I'll just repeat it going backwards. It was not that easy. And um, then when we went there that day, and we were there at the afternoon, I thought, okay, I know we came down here. We didn't go that far, and we went over that way. Okay, for those of you on Facebook, this will make it a lot easier. For those of you not, I'm sorry. Imagine this square. Here's the parking spot right here down the bottom part of the square. 
when we came down the hill, we thought, okay, we'll just go over here to this point where it's at. Well, when we walked there in the daylight, we found out that it's not here. It was not towards the bottom third of the square. It was towards the middle of the square over to the right. Mm. And it wasn't just that we weren't far enough this direction. We actually had to go back another direction and further out. Right. I had no idea. I had no <coughs> understanding of the distance that we had traveled that night in the dark like I thought I did. Yeah, the space is like... So, Kirk in the space also time, you said you can <laughs> make... <laughs> Kirk also said you can make it red, yellow, or white on the Sony. So for, for nice. people who are colorblind can change it to one that they can see better. And, and red and green are tough to see for colorblind people. Yeah, mm. Jonah just said yeehaw. Yeehaw! <laughs> Jonah. And that's the Jonah we know, you and yeah. I know? Awesome. Yeah. Hey, Jonah. Nice. So um, if you guys have that feature on a Sony only, I don't know about Nikon having it. I know that we got focused peaking things, too. A lot of the newer cameras are starting to incorporate it now because it's just something that's so Which useful. I'm surprised the 5D Mark IV did not. Really? Yeah, I'm surprised it didn't. Yeah, so, you know, thank goodness for Magic Lantern. <laughs> yeah. They're going to get a D4 they'll, they'll get a D probably in, within a year. So friends of oh, ours yeah, like so. Drew who have a Sony, congrats, man. You've got a way to focus peak and get that just right. So uh, Kirk says it doesn't matter, but I'm curious in a one-to-one -one test who would do better. Huh? Huh? It, honestly, yeah, I mean, not. I'm sure it's it the same. Much difference. <laughs> So Goblin Valley, that was really cool to see where we got lost and how really lost we were. Yeah, it took us a while, it took us quite a while to find our spot for the daylight. I never thought it would take that long. And because I knew the structure is like what I was looking for, right? I knew I had to have this, this, and this little thing in the middle. And even in the daylight, it looked totally different. Like I had like a little rock, which I kind of thought of like as an altar around these other rocks, and it was totally seemed more <laughs> open yeah. in the daylight, and it seemed totally more secluded <laughs> in the in the dark. So it was just, it was a total trip to uh, to try to find those spots again. Yeah, and if you see our Facebook listener group, the banner at the top is well, okay, you can't really see all the rocks that Brennan has in here. Yeah, yeah. But you can see that Milky Way shot that he captured. And my night, that spot, you found it first in the day. Hey, this is where you were, and I couldn't even recognize it while standing there. Right. I couldn't yeah, even we're both looking. I'm like, hey, there. those are the rocks that you shot. I'm like, nah. So I the grotto so. must be right behind us, and then sure <laughs> enough. The distance, everything was completely off. It was an amazing feeling. Yeah, it was so trippy. So what was that next story you were going to go into? So the next story is when the, the next night we actually drove out to um, Monument Valley. And so there's an official like Monument Valley like resort hotel place oh, yeah. now, like at the top of the cliff. And so we drove up there. I don't know how long it's been there, but it looked <laughs> fairly new. Maybe within the last 10 years. Okay. And so um, I'd never been there before. My first time there, but everything looked like it was new. So I was like, wow, this place... Is pretty awesome and light polluted what the heck i thought i was gonna have a dark sky yeah so that caused a lot of light pollution um we went down the trail to just camp out near the rocks and uh it was kind of insane because this was like the only road to go down into the monument valley area and it was yeah. crazy like huge divots and boulders in the road and stuff and it's Brendan like, was driving slow, and that's abnormal. Brendan drives quick and efficient. And so I thought, go slower. I look at the speedometer, you're going like five. And you were hitting those bumps, and it yeah. felt like you were speeding over speed bumps. Yeah, it was nuts. And I've got a newer vehicle that has high clearance, and it was still like really crazy. It made us nervous, like we were going the wrong direction. Yeah. It was yeah. such a bad road. And then when we got to the bottom, more to where we wanted to stop and park, it was, it was actually fine. It was better. But it was pretty nuts. I was it was really intense there for me. Like, and then the next morning we see like horse trailer after horse trailer <laughs> after horse trailer going up the same road, and they're all, wah, 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 like this. And I, thought, I, I was for sure like, they're going five times faster than we were, and I was for sure a horse is gonna get shot out of one of these. You know, like ejected <laughs> from the back. It was oh no, crazy. they lost one. He'll be ours now. Yeah, it was just crazy. And these people must do it all the time because they're like totally used to it. And we don't think that we actually should have done this. We're not sure what the rules are, but when we went down there, it was already 2 in the morning by that point. Maybe yeah. it was like 1 or something. It was closer to 1 or midnight. And we got down there at this spot, and we're ready for the sunrise that morning, and we're thinking, well, let's just sleep in the car right here. Might not be allowed. Sorry if it's not. Sorry, Navajo tribe, if we should not have done that. Uh, we, weren't, we weren't really sure. And so um, we just we just tried it out, and we were ready to leave as soon as anyone asked us to, you know? And so every car that came by, I was sitting up. Uh-oh, should we leave? Nope, no one's here. And then another car would come by. We're talking 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 a.m., constant cars 
passing mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. And every time they did, they were going slow past a little bumpiness, and I thought every time, oh, they pulled up next to us, and they're asking us to leave. And so I'd get up. But no one ever did. I mean, there was no rangers or anything, so no one... No rangers? Us, so. Did you say rangers? No, rangers. <laughs> okay. You said rangers. <laughs> okay. Reindeer rangers. No rangers. Watch out for those guys. Hey, guys, sorry. In the <laughs> off-season, this is where we work, <laughs> <laughs> and we want you guys to leave. <laughs> So, <laughs> sorry for my cough. So, we uh, had our tripods out already set up, and we had found a location that we thought would catch the Milky Way at 4 a.m., but once 4 a.m. came, I looked, clouds. Too many Tons clouds. Tons of clouds came in. It was, like, perfectly clear when we first got there. Like, there's a few hazy clouds, and we're like, wow, this could be really nice. If we wait for the Milky Way, it could open up and be nice. And then he woke up and said, it's cloudy, so I'm like, back to sleep. <laughs> back to sleep. Like, instantly, because we were exhausted. And uh, I wanted to mention how crazy the sleeping arrangement was on the inside. Is this a good time to mention it? Sure. So Brendan has an awesome new vehicle, and the way that he, he put all of our gear, fit them all in the back seat, we have our seat, okay, on the middle <laughs> seats are down, we're filled up the whole back seat with all of our crap. But we're packing so efficient these days that it's really like two big boxes each and a bunch of small things. And we were able to put all of Brendan's stuff in the front driver's seat, all of my stuff in the front passenger seat, and then we had one food box that we just put on the top of the vehicle. And that opened up the entire back for laying all the way out with nothing in our pack, just sleeping bags yeah, and so pillows. We just laid down some foam, that you know, the yellow camping foam that everybody has, and uh, put our sleeping bags down and slept. And so if, you know, if you're familiar with the Chevy Traverse or the Buick Enclave, that's the same basic seating arrangement. So. And it was just sweet how we did little Tetris maneuvers and we had all the boxes out of our way. And so we have a good setup. That Photog Adventure wagon is going to be awesome. I need, I need to get this thing it's technically there. not a wagon, but I want to call it that because of one of our stupid favorite songs when he calls it a photo wagon <laughs> in Bushes of Love. And so you I know always mention about. that. You know what we're talking about. A <laughs> few of them will. Any comments come up, Peyton? Um, just Chandler saying hi to Jonah. Okay. Hey, so, don't talk to each other. Talk to us. So when we were there yeah. um, in Monument Valley, the sun rise because those clouds had come over and it was completely overcast. Yeah. And it was actually raining all around us, but not, not actually on us, which was really nice. And so those storm clouds came in and they were really low hanging, like the nice ones that just roll underneath the sky. And the sun started rising and hit those. It was just unbelievable it was epic epic sunrise yeah we woke up at a time and looked out and thought oh man we got to get up now yeah because we could see the orange band on the horizon just getting just starting Mm -hmm. and we knew this is going to be brilliantly orange and then it got red and orange and just just incredible so before we even did our video we're just like you know just taking pictures and uh those pictures turned out really good so i'm excited i'm excited for mine a little bit more. I still got some more processing to do, but man, they were awesome. The only thing that didn't go well about that sunrise was that the clouds were so low that once it came up past that horizon of clouds, it didn't light up anything else anymore. No, 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 it didn't. It was all very even. There was no more dramatic light, but then that was perfect for our video that we wanted to do. So yeah. when you're doing video, um, you really want nice, even light. So overcast is actually perfect for video because then your face doesn't have harsh shadows on it. And stuff like that so when we're actually shooting videos um we actually want that for a light but when you're going out and doing you know landscape photography it's completely the opposite you want that <laughs> you want that those hard shadows and sometimes the dramatic lighting and all that stuff but um in video it doesn't really translate the same and so it's really interesting how that they're kind of opposites in that way so. yeah exactly so when we had that saddle that sh- the, the when we had the clouds blocking the light coming over us I never got that moment with my foreground element that got a good golden hour of light on it. Oh. I had a sunrise in the distance, but most of my subject in front of me was dark. I had a little bit of highlights on the flat part of the ground, the, the nice like sand that was in front of me, but not what I was really looking for. I yeah, for that golden and that, hour, it never hit. Never right, shot. and that makes it difficult because when you're shooting into a sunrise or sunset, uh, you do need to have that light on your subject, yeah. and you don't want to create it artificially because that just no, weird. No. So. So and yeah, I, that's, that's, that makes it, makes it tough. I think my major problem there was, if you've seen not Monument Valley, there's those like oven mitt monuments where you can see the thumbs. I think they're kind of mm-hmm. like this. The, the one hand closest to me, that rock formation, I think it was between me and the sun. And so I mm-hmm. sat in its shadow the whole sunrise. Oh, I see. So my subject never got lit. Yeah. 
And what's cool is I've seen pictures, and I was telling him when we were there, that I've seen pictures where the sun sets, that shadow from the from one hand will actually sh shine onto the other. You can see the silhouette of the hand. you can see the silhouette on the <laughs> other rock, which is like reverse. It's really cool. And so I've seen a few pictures like that before. People just go there at sunset at the right time of year because it has to be just angled just right. So it's pretty sweet. Yeah, that was awesome. So we have gone to a certain point that I can't tell because we've been doing answering and questions. And so I don't know if we've gone long enough for our first break, but I'm guaranteeing we have gone over. Yeah, we've yeah, been so. streaming for 40 minutes. Yeah. Right. But I don't know how long the podcast that's actually going to be edited has gone yet. I can't tell. So let's, just, let's go ahead and take our first break of the podcast and we'll come back and tell more of the stories of our thousand mile trip and then get into what went well and what could have gone better in our photography. Okay. So there's our first break. Those of you who listen to our podcast before, you know how we have these breaks. And we just like to take them for ourselves. And we didn't do a break in the Mark G podcast, and I kind of missed it. Because we didn't have that mm. chance to really have that, that moment. I guess it's kind of a rest period for everyone. And then we come back into topic again. When we go on that long string of questions and back and forth, it's easy to kind of go like this and waver off path. And so it's yeah, nice yeah. to bring everything back in and then get focused again on another moment. That was second. difficult though, because Mark G was really good about oh, so um, cool. being interviewed. He was really just, we we're just talking to him, just like a couple of buds, you know? And uh, he also, you know, his time is already valuable. And so we didn't want to like spend too much time. So mm -hmm. we, we, we kept to almost exactly an hour of yep. his time. Which was really cool. That's the most efficient we've ever been <laughs> with an interviewee. Sorry, Nathan St. Andre. We and, were the uh, worst efficient. With oh you. my gosh, yeah. I feel, <laughs> feel bad for Nathan because we just spent hours <coughs> um, troubleshooting before we could get it right. So now we've got it down to a nice, efficient system and uh, works. Yeah. it works well. All right. Any questions, Peyton, that we should address before we go into the next segment? Nope. Okay. I got this back on. It was turning itself off because ah. it was on a timer, actually. Right, right. This. All right, so what we have still pending are went wandering well, off wandering story, off, yeah. and then we'll go back into oh Monkey Dugway, and then we'll go into the oh yeah we already did that okay, yeah 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 go ahead you want to bring us back yeah hey guys welcome back to the podcast in this segment we're going to continue from some of the stories and we'll go on to what went well and what didn't go well um, so when we were there at Monument Valley and we. We're just taking pictures. This we were done the with the sunrise. We're about to do the video. And we start walking back to the car. Yeah, well, Aaron starts walking back to the car. Yeah, and I, I start did. looking over there. I'm like, hey, what's that <laughs> over there? And then it kind of like it's a bluff. So it kind of drops off a little bit. And then goes down to like a little rock valley. And then it's like huge drop off. But, if, but before the huge drop off, it's like a canyon. A it's tiny, like really tiny canyon. A little goalie. Well, I was like a little, I was in a goalie, but there was a canyon like in front of us. Oh, like, I got before you. Before you see the rocks, it's like there's like a couple hundred foot drop. And then the rocks are way out there, and you don't realize that it's that steep until you get closer. Like, whoa, that drops off. And so I was just like in a little goalie before the major drop off, and I saw this cool little plant. So I was getting like some pictures with my phone. As I was Shh. shooting with my camera, I was actually saw this bumblebee, and that took a lot of my time. And Aaron, the whole time, was wondering, like, where, where the heck did you go? Because he couldn't see me. And we're right. coming back. Yes. When I saw him walk off, he walked over the little bump. And I'm like, ah, he's probably just grabbing something from his gear, and he'll be right back. So I go to the car. I'm getting my breakfast set up. I look over. Huh, where the heck is Brendan? Ah, he's going to be here any second. I get more breakfast. I get everything poured in my bowl. I got my cereal going. Where the heck is Brendan? Where the heck is Brendan? I finished my cereal, <laughs> and he still hasn't shown up. And I'm like, you know what? If Brendan actually hurt himself, I've really taken my time. I've been taking my time to go <laughs> find him. I haven't been worried. And so I'm thinking, crap, what if he is actually hurt? So I go over and start looking for him, and uh, I found Brendan like you find a toddler out in the grasses. He's down there with a little bug. He's like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. I mean, this little yellow, you know, <laughs> blossoming plant, and there's, there's a blue and gray bumblebee. Really cool bumblebee. And I'm like, I've never seen a bumblebee that's blue and gray before, and I lived in the desert They're for the 20 years. They're the most deadly. Yeah, <laughs> and so I was being very quiet and very calm while this guy was flying around because the last thing I wanted to do is get stung by something I'd never seen before. And uh, I come up upon him, too. and he's like, oh, shh, 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 don't like it. He's like, why? So I got my camera on my <laughs> phone. I'm all recording it with my phone, and uh, I'm taking pictures with my regular camera. And uh, it was kind of cool because then at the end of my little video, which we'll post, uh, I, I pulled the phone back so you could like, to see my camera set up with the monuments behind it. And it's kind of cool for macro to like 
wide angle kind of thing. It was pretty neat. So. Yeah, I think it's going to be an awesome bit of B-roll for our footage. Yeah. We have the Patreon behind the scenes video coming up. It might be, I think it will be what I do this week instead of the Rusty Parker's video. Those of you familiar with our schedule and our videos enough that you've actually watched the end screen, I usually say, this is what's coming up next week. The last month, I've just basically lied to you over and over and over <laughs> again. Because I'm like, okay, that's what we're doing next week, absolutely. And then I get to that time to start working on editing, I'm like, oh no. I don't have my pictures edited. Or Rusty right. and Brendan don't have their pictures back to me. And so now it's 10 o'clock at night, I can work until 2 a.m., but I don't have any of the resources I need to edit it. So I have to switch gears, do something else, record something else, or edit something else. And so that's consistently happened the last month. It's been a little crazy. It's but difficult, we're getting back yeah, on track. it's difficult to get the workflow. So many things have happened this last month that we're just kind of throwing us off track. So, But yeah. thankfully we're on track. We've got the Patreon launch behind us, and now we can focus on our, new, our other content. And so believe me in the future when I say that, but not this week. Give me two weeks. Yeah. So Peyton, so, you had one more question that came up. Jeff Peterson said yeah, the shadow, um, the shadow on the mittens is in March and September. Oh, oh right. he knows the Good. dates that you hit. Okay, awesome pro tip from Jeff Peterson. If you've not watched his, oh, watch his stuff. Sorry, if you haven't seen his stuff on his Facebook, Red Cliffs Photography. He's awesome. And he's a really good guy and a fun guy to hang out. We're going to hang out with him this weekend. He says that from, wait, what were the months? March, March to September? September? Yeah. yeah. Okay. From March through September. Those oh, are the March and September. Oh, wait. Is the that what it is? March yeah. and September. There's yeah. an and between uh, it. Okay. Okay. So only in the month of March and in the month of September will the shadow line up just right for that. So now we got to wait for September. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be fun to go down there. We'll be down there again. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's our playground. It's such a cool place. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's so awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. And maybe our little intern can join us. Our little. He's a foot and a half. Finally. Me. Finally. Well. I've only been doing this for like two months. He's working for free, so uh, yeah. we don't expect too much of him. I'm surprised he shows up <laughs> as much as he does. <laughs> He's great, though. So yeah, I am. You're doing a good job, and you're featuring me for your first time in a podcast. Good work, man. Of course, now people are thinking, okay, even an intern, you should be able to get all the stuff out on time. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, <It's> so hard. <laughs> all right, coughing over. Another thing that was kind of a, a nostalgic moment going back to this area was the Moki Dugway. If you guys have seen the Goosenecks and Goblins YouTube video, you know that I was not only scared, but annoyingly scared when I went through there. I mean, I had three hours of sleep, Brendan was driving, I was on the passenger side looking over the cliff, and I was getting freaked, up, freaked out of my mind the whole way there. And when we went through it this time in the daylight, I had a chance, well, I guess it was daylight last time, but with more sleep, I had a chance to really go and see, okay, we're fine. This is not that scary. And I don't think once I said anything. Well, maybe I did. No, you did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> did. <laughs> well, you know, you need to go slower. But I wasn't as bad as last time. Yeah, and it's different. I don't know. It's always different driving a rental car versus your own car. And <laughs> you uh, were more you get used to your car, and you're just like, I know my car can handle, right? So <laughs> I didn't want to find out how much car, it could handle. Not sure, but you're willing to take risks because it's not your car. So this, <laughs> you know. So those of you who don't know the Moki Dugway, which is 100 percent of you, and those unless you're Tim, Timothy Lynn, he knows that one. Yeah, he knew it. He actually posted our listeners group. He just posted a picture of it. Oh, he did today. Yeah. Awesome. So then the uh, location there, you're basically coming at a higher elevation, and there's a big drop off, and they have scratched out a road very well done it's not like it's a crappy road it's very no, well it's really well um, graded too actually yeah graded really well it's it's flat but it's just you don't see it you can't see it from the it's distance it's just this it's crazy switchback that goes so up this tight canyon wall basically it's just yeah. i mean it's insane imagine my hand for the facebook viewers imagine my hand is what you're hitting up YouTube. against oh yeah facebook was imagine our youtube viewers those are watching on youtube imagine my hand is the wall you drive up to it and then you just kind of climb it like a mountain go back and forth back and forth back and forth and go up that's what it was and mm -hmm. so it's very steep very scary if you're looking over the edge and it's all gravel so if you take it too fast you're always afraid that everything's gonna skin out from underneath you and you're gonna go off the cliff but that never was at risk and within five or ten minutes of driving it you are literally halfway up, and you're like, holy cow, this thing is tall. And the drop-up is like hundreds oh. of feet. And, it's, and you're seeing a whole valley, and it's just nuts. The Valley of Kings or the Valley of Gods right valley there? Valley of Gods, I think. Valley of Gods, not Kings. Right. 
Kings. Though. I think it's the Valley of Kings. Though. I don't know. Okay, but that area right there is beautiful, beautiful view. If yeah. you can drive to Goosenecks from Natural Bridges, Nas Natural Bridges National Monument, take the pathway that's more direct because you'll go through the Moki Dugway. If you see it on your map, very squirmy little worm that's right in the middle of the road path. Mm. That's, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. So then we wanted to talk about... Um, so since this trip was an opportunity for us to film a video, one of the biggest nuisances were trucks and loud vehicles. We constantly had loud vehicles driving through, and Brendan and I, we're not actors. We are very sincere, genuine doofuses who you will follow and have fun. Yeah, when you see the videos, is just <laughs> watching our weirdness. what we do. Yeah. <laughs> and then so we had this moment where we have an actual line, a script that we're supposed to be following. That and we even wrote, and it was still harder to deliver. To deliver. <laughs> yeah. We'd give each other one and a half lines or two sentences real quick, and we'd deliver those lines. And so we'd be out there trying to deliver it perfectly while walking or turning towards the camera, and then you'd get moments where you get ruined by trucks driving through, and all of a sudden, here's another big truck. Every two or three minutes, oh. there's a big horse truck driving through that road. It was nuts. Our lapel mics are good, but they still pick up that kind of noise. Yeah. So we had to redo it. So man, we, we, we go out there and we'd be pacing back and forth on the ground. We had little feet print pathways that were completely obvious by the time we were done because it was like, wow, we just walked that 50 times. Yeah. It was a lot of fun to do though, but different. We're so glad we don't script Photog Adventure videos. Oh yeah, it's, it's really hard. I mean, you have a lot, when you actually read a script and memorize it and or try to memorize it and then to, and then to deliver it naturally holy cow you have a lot more respect for actors at that point when you actually try to act well it's not as easy as it looks and so um yeah you get a little bit more respect for actors you know when you, when you attempt oh, to yeah. do something like that and yeah. they have longer lines than we had and it was not oh yeah long. like yeah and then try to add the emotion and all that stuff it's just it's crazy that's what they have <laughs> entire you know schools and workshops and stuff for acting because there's just there's a lot more involved than just like reading a line and saying it you know <laughs> yeah so. and it's so easy to be corny oh my god so we would write the line right. and it sounded fine reading it but when we actually had to deliver it it yeah. felt like we had to do once a thumbs up once you do this then it's over <laughs> yeah. so if you haven't seen the patreon video yet go to our youtube channel and watch it or re-watch it and think about how brendan and i are trying to deliver a line without one laughing without two kind of thinking obviously while we're delivering the line because we're trying to remember the next word or looking too awkward with our cameras that we're holding hey i'm aaron king <laughs> it was yeah, really it's really hard bizarre. not to look robotic or it's really hard not to look too cheesy <laughs> yeah and it's a really fine line i mean it's just really fine we cross cheesy more than anything yeah yeah but and that's you know that's okay that's who we are yeah <laughs> what do you do what can you do all right, so any other questions before we go into what went well and what didn't go well? No. All okay. right, thanks for watching, those of you that I see are eight right now watching. Glad you're hanging out with us. So, um, and those of you watching in the future recording of this, thanks for watching it. Check out our podcast if you guys need something to listen to that is a photography-related podcast. Now, it's not about news. We're not about what's going on with photography outside of blah, blah, blah. We're, we're not giving you the current blog posts and news posts that you're seeing every day. Right. We're just basically saying, hey, we're chronicling our adventure and going out to locations and talking about what, are, what went well and what didn't go well for us, telling stories about it. Yeah. And then interviewing other people and talking about their stories of going out photography. And usually when it comes to the gear stuff, it's usually stuff that we use. Oh yeah. That we talk about. Oh, I don't really like, I don't really like to do any kind of review I think, it's, I think it's lame and impossible to do a good review of anything you haven't actually handled yourself. Oh, so, right. You know, so that's my that's my thought. And, that, and that's how most reviewers are, but I've heard so a lot of people attempt to review just on the hype of something coming out. They give the specs and stuff, and that's that's all well and good, but that's not, that's not really how I handle it. So Yeah, and I'm glad you don't handle it that way, because yeah. I like being more genuine. So let's go into what went well and what didn't go well. Uh, man, okay, I'll start this one. What went really well, those of you on the YouTube channel can see, my iPad Pro, it's gigantic, it's awesome. But I actually can Wi-Fi it from my Canon 6D and connect with it and do a remote shoot with it. And it was really nice because I had my camera really low to the ground, taking a shot where there was this S curve going from, it was sort of, I guess a change in elevation caused where the wind and the water would come through there. Yeah, like a little it dry wash. swept out a wash, yeah. yeah. And so it was really cool with ripple lines and some foot feet print, unfortunately, or feet print all over it. Well, not all over, but enough to be annoying. Mm -hmm. 
and it was cool to have that S curve with that wash lead towards that Monument Valley hand and have the sunrise be there. And so I was really excited for that and I had my camera nice and low so I can really capture that moment. I tried higher. This is what didn't go well. I'll jump mm -hmm. into that too. Mm -hmm. I tried higher up, but the way that the S curve ended so soon, it didn't look very long oh. higher. But when I was down low, it gave the impression of leading further into my mid ground, my background mm -hmm. elements. And it was stronger there than it would have been if I had gone higher from my tripod and kind of had it obviously end in the first third. I wanted to cross over from the first third to the second third. Okay. And I only really got that being low to the ground and extending the, the implied distance of this mm -hmm. wash. Mm -hmm. So that went really well using that, that iPad to actually go, okay, I have this shot. I'm loving it, but I'm looking at it on a tiny, you know, 2.5, 3.5 inch screen. Right. I wanted to be for certain that I wasn't going to miss this sunrise. I'm going to have a moment where I go, oh, if only I would have moved my camera over this way, I would have been better. Or if I took out that distracting element here, if I framed it just a little bit. So I popped this guy out, got it connected on the Wi-Fi, and I used my iPad Pro, and we're talking giant screen now. And I was able to fine tune my picture. I saw the weaknesses that I had, and I also saw weaknesses that I just had to deal with. I, mm. I couldn't better them. But the strengths that I could really focus on, it brought me to bring the camera even lower, and it had me actually turn away from one footprint that I didn't recognize as there, and pull over to this direction, and wow. there was a cool rock, a cool rock texture that was in the foreground, that it was the most interesting thing in the closest foreground that if I cut it off it wouldn't have been in there and why would I cut it off it wasn't any better getting cut off it was better with it and so thanks to having a big awesome screen connected to my camera I was able to see that recognize it right there on location and get the camera shot right from out of camera you know? well and the screen is like a really like good density too like it's a really like high definition screen Oh, yeah, yeah. So you're not just getting like this blurry pixelated image, you're getting like a really good quality image. As if the image was transferred to the computer. Right, the iPad. right, yeah. which is a huge advantage. It was, know? absolutely. If gonna, especially if you're working on little details, this thing's going to show, which is pretty sweet. Oh, I loved it. It went really well using that. So I built up my 5D Mark III. I'm a little sad because uh, when I was considering getting that, I was also considering getting a 6D, and I thought, yeah, the Wi-Fi sounds nice, but I probably won't use it much. Just, <laughs> and now I'm just like, dang it, I wish I had Wi-Fi. So maybe I need to get one of those i iFi cards or something like that and try that out. I know that Jeff Harmon on the Photo Taco podcast has talked about which one didn't work for him and which one maybe he can. Mm. So listen to that one. Yeah. If you guys haven't, go to Jeff Harmon, go to Photo Taco podcast, just Google Photo Taco, you'll find it. He has a good episode about that iFi card. I'll have, to, I'll have to watch that too because yeah, I do remember him mentioning something about which one one of them didn't work for him and so yeah. one and I avoid may, that one. I may even be mistaken that it's not one of his photo taco episodes. It might be an IP roundtable podcast as well. So just look for that if you can't find it. Okay. Um, well, one well for me was the sunrise was amazing. It was it was really easy to shoot. Um, such an amazing bright thing, um, and even the pictures I took with my phone turned out like great so i stuck a couple of those on instagram kind of turned out even better yeah um my well, angle over where you went you got away from the shadow that i was in mm -hmm. so it went really well so you, you're saying better as far as yours versus yours mine. yours were better yeah um and uh so yeah i have some i still need to process some of them and i'm excited to get to working on them because they were really fun to take and it was such a great place to be in that morning it was just awesome so um, what didn't go well? Uh, anything you learned from the trip? Anything I learned? Yeah, I mean, it was just, it was just exhausting. I mean, I don't know. Like, it's hard <laughs> to think. A thousand mile I mean, trip is exhausting? Hard. Yeah, I mean, I drove the whole way too, so <laughs> it was hard to think about what, what didn't go well. Um, nothing really particularly comes to mind. I mean, I think it, overall, I mean, <laughs> the hardest challenge was delivering our lines. You know, because we were focused on making a video and not really out taking photographs. So mm -hmm. it was such a different, like, mindset that I was really just focused on what I'm going to say and where we're going to do it. And, you know, what I learned is that it's really hard to deliver lines cleanly. and But it's cool in the way that we can take takes and we can do it over and over again. And if we pick a spot that's not too weird or hard to get to, like one part of the video I came walking up over the hill and that was like the hardest part. And I was only like- The hardest part was walking? And it was only like five steps. And I was like, you know, everything else were just kind of like, just hang, hanging around more or less. So, um, wasn't too difficult, but 
but delivering the lines and memorizing those, even after I've just read them and re-delivering them, two minutes later was hard. <laughs> so, if anything, I learned is that uh, you need more sleep and you need um, to eat something if you're going to be memorizing and saying stuff back. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Because it's not easy when you have no sleep and no nutrition. Stay so. hydrated, sleep well, eat well. So your yeah. creativity and you're just you're at your best. Because your mind just totally starts shutting down. I mean, it's just like, I'm just like, what did I just read again? Like, ah, oh, why can't I remember this? It's like, oh, because I haven't eaten yet. Especially on those so. long trips. Yeah. If you're going to do something crazy like that. Well, awesome. Let's go ahead and take our last break of the podcast, and we'll go ahead and come back and talk about gear time and tip of the week, and we'll end the podcast, episode 35. All right. Okay, so. Uh, -da -da. It's good, and it's so warm in here, guys. Like, we've got lights on that are baking us. Should I turn the AC us. back on? We want no, to the well, AC, on for, AC on for a minute. Yeah, let's do it's it. It's going to be a little noisy with the AC on, but oh my gosh. Sorry. I don't even want to. What There's three the of us is. in here. Plus lights, plus computers, and it's a small plus, closed room. It's, yeah, it's I said they can't hear us right now. You turn your mic off again. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. Um, Holy crap, the AC is so loud. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's really loud. We're not going to really benefit from it, and we're almost done. So let's just turn that off and go back yeah. to it. Okay. We're just going to try to wrap up fast so we can get our sweaty selves out of here. Yeah. So gross. Chandler just said he was back from grabbing pizza, by the way. Hey, hey Chandler, welcome back from grabbing pizza. Welcome back to the what? show. Hey, the pizza he's here. actually only lives around the corner. We could show up bring at his house and be here. like, where's the pizza? Hey, Chandler, just bring us some pizza. We're hungry. <laughs> he probably will, too. Don't take it from anyone who should be eating it. If you have extra, bring us over yeah, extra. Yeah. Bring it in. Bring us the extras. <laughs> so, Peyton, any questions that we can address or comments? Nope. That we can laugh at? Uh, no. <laughs> no? All right, cool. Just lost them. But we had 10 for a minute. We had 10 for a second. <laughs> they hopped in and hopped out. Well, it's okay. They can watch the whole thing later. Yeah. So thanks guys for joining us. It's, we're okay. We're back on, yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome back to the Photo Stuck Adventures podcast. Now we're gonna go into gear time with Brendan. Yeah. So um, before me, I have my 85 millimeter, but I'm just gonna hold it as I talk about 50 millimeters. So um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know it's a little weird. That makes total it, sense. It feels nice to hold 85 millimeter. Uh, this is why I ended um, the podcast. I've got an 85. <laughs> so for gear time, I want to talk about. Um, the 50 millimeter prime. Um, people have been using that for Astro because they can get them cheap and they're fast. So the cheapest one is the 50 millimeter um, Nifty 50. Most camera setups have a Nifty 50 1.8. Yeah, the 1.8 is the big difference. Yeah, I, I know. I think Sony has one. I know Nikon has one. I know Canon has one. And then the next bump up would be the 50 millimeter 1.4 for the Question. Canon line. And then there's also a 50 millimeter 1.2 which is the highest end, L glass, and I'm pretty sure Nikon and Sony both have a 1.2 option. Has the option. largest aperture option. As well, oh, yeah, so, so nice. 1.2, 50 millimeter. I just picked one up this weekend. And so I wanna do an Astro shootout with the 50 millimeter. So we're gonna do the Nifty 50, the, the, the newest one, which is the STM lens. And that's the STM that I've been borrowing, that right? That he's been using, which is the great little lens. Oh yeah, I'm loving it. It's like it. under $200 used. Borrowing it or new. It's kind of like in the 90s when you'd borrow your, or the 80s more, when you borrow your friend's Nintendo game and it actually became yours for six years. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of how I'm borrowing Brendan's. Because I don't ever have a need for it, and I have a 1.4 already. He's been borrowing it for a while, so. Yeah. So, Justin Park asks, anyone here know if it's possible to focus on stars without infinity ring? Okay, um, Justin, the reason why we are infinity because you're trying to focus on an object that's impossibly out of your depth of field range. So, you will be at your depth of field of infinity just to focus on anything further than, you know, what, 100 I'm yards? Not, yeah. uh, seven feet sometimes. And so, right. I mean, you're depending on your lens, you this have a point where it focuses five. to and anything in between, it gives you a kind of a depth of field option. After that, you're focused to infinity. And so every lens can focus to infinity, so you won't have to try and do that. I mean, I speak without knowing every lens in the world, but I'm pretty confident to say that every lens has a point of infinity that you can get to. Most do. There's some. There's some weird. You know, there's some weird ones that don't. that don't. Okay. But other than I that, most doubt people you have those, Justin. But every consumer lens is going to have an infinity. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So when you're focusing to infinity, you usually have a range that the infinity mark is at because of the coldness or the warmth of the of the lens will dictate where that point of infinity actually is most in focus. So 
you have that range that you have to hit. And it's, it's such a minor difference. You can't tell the difference without doing all the extra effort of the loop and sticking yeah, so it when 10 you do, times. Yeah, when you're doing Astro, what I find is usually when you go all the way to infinity, it's still blurry. So then you have to back it up a little bit Just closer. A little. And then you gotta find that, that really nice spot where it's, everything's nice and sharp. But it can be hard to get to. Um, some lenses make it easier. Some lenses have a, a, a longer focus. It has a larger um, range than yeah, the Yeah, a larger range of focus. And so you can really tighten it up more. Um, but other, other lenses that don't have like this one has a really, I mean, here's infinity, here's, here's macro, infinity macro. I mean, that's it. It's like, it's like that, but other more expensive lenses seem to have a longer range of focus. And so you yeah. get a really nice, usually for video, but if you use a video folk, if you use a video lens for your, um, Astro, you probably have a lot, a lot, a lot more finessing to really get that, to dial in that fine spot without over tweaking it too much. So. And just yeah. a note that I haven't said yet, that if you're worried about focus, get yourself focused with the, with the focus ring and the loop perfectly. But then you can even tighten your shot up more by stopping down on your aperture. So you're at the widest open aperture and you come in a stop or two, you will noticeably see a change in that star where it tightens up a little bit more. And the reason why is because it's kind of it's kind of squinting your eye now. It's closing the aperture on it and getting tighter on bending that light less. I guess I, I don't know the science behind it, yeah. but I know that it's like squinting your eye and focusing in on something. And you squint that lens aperture in, tighten it on that on that star, and it looks better. The only problem is is you're also stopping amounts of light that you're coming into your sensor, and you want to have it as open as you can and look good. Yeah. Mike Spivy said, focus on something a long way away in the daytime or the moon at night, then mark the focus ring. Yep, I love that, Mike. That advice is perfect in the certain times of the year, but if you go out in a year, if you go at a time where at the sunset it's at 70, but you go out in the cold and it's 40 degrees or wherever you go high in elevation and it's as More cold as 20, you might find, Mike, that the folk, that the infinity point will adjust slightly or change on you because of the temperature change, if it's that extreme. If you don't have that extreme of a change in temperature, then what Mike says is perfect, and I've done that all the time, where you get a tree in your backyard, that's you know, about you know the whole backyard distance back there, you see at that point, and you focus on it and tape it off there, it's really easy to know you're in focus, and then just take it with you, and it's ready to go. So, and Justin awesome. said thank you. Cool. Yeah. You're welcome, Justin. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah. So, so I'll I will do a gear time um, with the shootout. We'll go out and take the 50 millimeters we'll out. We'll do with that us. tonight or this weekend even. Um, this weekend. Okay. Weekend, this weekend. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do anything tonight. So. Ah, it's too bad. So this weekend for sure. We've already got that planned. Um, I'll bring my new lens. You bring yours, and we'll bring all the lenses. And uh, I'm going to sell my 1.4. But before I sell it, before I list it, I want to do the shootout. So yeah. So we have the whole it. range. I know it's been done before, but we're going to do ours specifically on, on Astro. I don't think it has been done, at least And in so YouTube people video. are maybe thinking, hey, but is 52 like zoomed in to do Astro? Well, uh, it's a prime lens, so you're going to get really sharp and let a lot of light in, and you just do panos. People use 50s for panos, and they turn out amazing because, because it's a prime lens, you have less distortion because it's 50 millimeter, and you can really make a beautiful, huge, awesome pan out of that. So. And that 50 has a giant <laughs> aperture in the back that's just an amazing view of the light source that's out there. And so you're yeah, getting I mean, it looks a, a lot like better, this, yeah. higher, this is very quality similar. image. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. So that's... you can see, you know, this is a 1.8, and uh, the 50 1.2 is almost maybe the same size, a little bit bigger than that. And the I mean, more light you can let in with your lens, the less noise you'll have to worry about because it's not going to be all sensor noise because yeah, the sensors have Yeah, so you can turn your ISO down a little bit and you can even like stop it. You know, if it's really big, like a 1.2, it might stop it down to two and get a nice sharp you yeah. know, image and still let more light in. So it's, and it's pretty awesome. Even though you have to do a panorama, it's actually better to do that panorama. So you're going to win in the end. So yeah. it works awesome. Yeah. Is that the end of gear time? Anything That's the else? End of gear time for now. Yeah. All right. Question before we go on to tip of the week. Nope. All right. Nope. So for tip of the week, it comes straight from Jeff Peterson. It doesn't come from me. Tim and Jeff have reminded me about this. I'm like, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, those are good guys. <laughs> you guys, have, I, I've been doing time lapses, and I did time lapses that went into sunset over in Grand Teton, and my problem was is that I'm an idiot, and so. I've been using my ISO, and I noticed at the very beginning of the ISO, it's auto and ramps up to all these numbers. And I've always just been in this manual mindset. I'm controlling my ISO. I'm controlling everything. 
I'm better <laughs> because I'm learning a manual. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I kind of like ignore it. I put the I put the horse, uh, what do they call those? Blinders. The horse blinders on. I'm focused. I'm not going to use anything other than manual. Well, we're at a sunset and I'm sitting there recording a time lapse and I'm thinking, I wish I could bull ramp. And Jeff goes, why don't you use auto ISO? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Wait, what? Why don't you just use auto ISO? It'll ramp for you. Wait, wait, what? Oh, like, oh, yeah. You can use auto ISO, and it'll adjust the ISO as the night gets darker and keep your image nice and neutral and stay in a certain exposure, a metering level that's like, here, it's going to stay there the whole time. So that was an oh, yeah moment for me because <laughs> when I had it, I remember when I had a T3i and I was recording um, uh, I was recording a fire on the other side of the mountains from my house, that and the started. moon was rising as the fire was, as the sun was setting, moon was oh, rising, cool. the fire was going, and I did a time lapse, and I remember... I remember it actually ramped for me, and I was trying to remember how did I do that. And then when he said that, I was like, "Oh yeah, because yeah, I was in auto you? ISO when that was happening." <laughs> and uh, that was the first time I used Magic Lantern, and then the camera was just set to auto ISO, and it ramped pretty nicely. So yeah. So the tip of the week is to remember what I didn't, and that in your manual mode, set everything else, get the exposure the way you want, but put it on auto ISO. And then it'll change for you, and you don't have to go through your camera all the time and change down your shutter or change even your aperture. Which you never do that. You wouldn't change your aperture right. mid, mid time lapse, but you would change your shutter to try and ramp it. And I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I was thinking. So thanks, Jeff. Thanks for that feedback. Thanks for that helpful reminder. <laughs> I mean, I had a hard time finding auto ISO because I had never used it, even though I remember seeing it every time I changed my ISO. It's at the very beginning of that list. Yeah, yeah. At yeah. least on a Canon, you see at the very beginning of that list of all your options for ISO, and I just completely ignored that it was there like an idiot awesome so thanks guys for joining us tonight thanks for joining us on youtube and watching this video we try to do at least one podcast a month and right now it is may and this is our podcast of the month i guess we're doing live but we have an intern now that'll help us out we can go live a lot more if you guys enjoy this content please comment or give us a thumbs up and let us know yeah yeah we loved it thanks for doing this do it more it's a lot of fun And then come back to us on Monday when this is an edited version of the podcast, episode 35. You'll find it. It's right now saying an hour and 12 minutes on our task cam that we recorded. And so this will be edited down to probably 48 minutes, maybe 52, somewhere around there. I'm going to somehow lose 20 minutes out of this because I do a lot of sweet magic editing on it. So thanks for joining us for the last hour and uh, 15 minutes. Yeah, thank uh, you. Be sure to visit our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash... Photog Adventures. Yeah, please. If you want to give us a monetary high five of $2, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you for our current patrons. You guys are awesome, and you're helping uh, support really us really to loving you keep guys. us going. Thanks for giving us this feeling that we're doing the right thing, that we should keep building this content. Give goosebumps. <laughs> Your <laughs> donations like allow I said, us to make these videos. <laughs> yeah, we like to border on the edge of cheesy all the time. Yeah. So thanks for thanks watching, guys. thanks for listening, and talk to you guys next week. Now Brennan's going to go over to you and hang up on you. But see you guys. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Finish. Did you actually finish?